Jeffrey, good morning, my man. Um, anyone who is totally locked into gold ball hunting can tell right away if they're watching the video. Now you can't tell if you're <laughs> on the if you're. Maybe you can tell if this is audio only that we're in both in in kind of different places today. But uh, uh, what's going on there, dude? Yeah. Where, where are you? Um, still somewhere on the western hemisphere, uh, a little farther south uh, today. I'm down in um, Fresno. Um, the Fresno State Bulldogs uh, are they're hosting the uh, I think it's the Mountain West Conference tournament um, tennis, yesterday. Ten tennis tennis tournament okay. uh, yesterday today and tomorrow and so they're also doing a little alumni uh, gathering tonight <clears throat> so um so i decided uh before i head out to michigan i came down to um you know kind of uh walk down memory lane a little bit and, right um and you know just kind of check you know see what's happening so good well i see that your uh your teammate brad stein is getting inducted in the norcal hall of fame yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good for so, him and he's uh, He's, uh, I think he's on a little bit of a break now too, because I think uh, Kevin Anderson is, uh, isn't he injured or something? So um, could be. I've not I seen him. I don't I've, know. Yeah, haven't seen him playing. So I don't know. Um, well, so is he going to be down there this weekend for that? I don't know. Thing? You know, I've, we've been we've been like you know kind of head down in the sand on this you know the gold ball and You're right. Um, I, I've been getting ready. It's like every day. It, it's like every day is accelerating toward. Next Sunday, you know. Well, the, the freight train has has crested, yeah, and now is it, it, just barreling yeah. downhill. Yeah, so every day has just been filled with you know lots of uh, major to micro details. That's good. That's um, good. That's and good. as you know, the day or was it yesterday? No, the day before. You know, uh, trying to track down a a, a water issue uh, on the property, and so uh, just. Just stuff, you know, life. So and I, don't, I don't know, I don't why, know who's why, gonna be here. Why does this stuff seem to happen right, right before you have everything organized? And I know you're totally you're totally organized to leave and and uh, and yet these yes. unforeseen things decide to crop up. Yeah. It's kinda like an so, injury. You kinda go out there to play a match, you're feeling you wake up, you go, Wow, I haven't felt this good in a long time and you go up there in the warm up and you're hitting and you go, Oh, Oh, <laughs> what, 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 what is that? You feel that little tweak in your lower back and you go, why now? Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> right. So you're working so, your yeah, way through it's, it. It's, uh, it's kind of like that, you know? So, um, so to answer the first question is, I don't, I don't know who's going to be here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go out to the, the matches at three o'clock. They're in the semifinals today. So the matches at three and then there's a gathering at uh, a local, a local grill pub. Uh, for the team afterwards, and that's where we're all going to get together at, after the match. So cool. fun, um, fun, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we got to get to um, a recording here today. Actually, give the folks uh, a little something. nugget, a nugget or two of something. We something. can't just hear chat about you know what our yes. day's like. I mean, we can't we can't be doing that. Um, all right, so we are in episode number. It looks like one hundred and three today. Um, and here's what, here's kind of what I've got, um, unless you've got something on your mind, you got anything burning, uh, that, that, uh, um, that, that you want to kind of hammer out? Or? No, like I said, I, I, my, my, my suggestion list is as, as you can probably know, has been dwindling this last week as we've been like, you know, as again, as I'm, the freight train is headed yeah, toward, you yeah, know, right. The fifth. right. So right. no, it's all you go okay, ahead. Okay. Like, so, um, I think. I think one of, and we've talked about this a gazillion times, but I don't think we've really, or, or, or maybe it's one of those topics that we could always keep talking about in terms of trying to hammer home to our students and all players that really it's, it's if you don't get this organized right, that it doesn't really matter, how, you know, think, well, maybe I'll go a little more grippy here, or maybe I'll do this, or maybe I'll have another tactic or this or that. But to me, it's like with, and I don't think it is so much with with the pros, with the top guys. I think they're totally, they've totally got it organized. Certainly, it's the difference between some guy who's who's languishing around 250 in the world, right. and has got the same physical skills, the same the same resources in terms of coaching and all this kind of stuff, and and you know, has got the money somehow. Right. 
either sponsorship or, you know, families helping out, but is the difference between actually being 250 in the world and actually getting straight into the main draws of these right. big tournaments. Getting, getting and, in the, yeah, top 100, top 75, yeah. you know, will get you, will get you into that league. You know? and, and I really believe the same thing applies to the rest of us, to all amateur yes. players, to all club players, to specifically the kind of players that we're trying to help senior players, competitive players, right? Whether right. it's league or whether it's, whether it's a tournament thing is that the mental part of tennis to me is like the final frontier. I think that we, we've totally explored all the different ways to be able to hit a fricking forehand. Yeah. All of the different ways. And I think we've come up with all the different ways that you can go out there and practice a forehand. Right. But if you don't have the mental part, right. Yeah. All that stuff just doesn't really doesn't matter. Doesn't, doesn't add up to a pile of beans. I mean, it does matter in terms of <laughs> sure there there could be some technique part of your game that you've you've got to do better with, right? You've just right. got to figure something out. And there's no question that that the only way to do that is number one is to have the right model to work from, right? A realistic model, and then number right. two, you got to be able to have someone who can actually kind of point you in the right direction because way too often with technique we we just start veering off in yeah. the wrong direction and the next thing you know is you're worse off than you were before right so where am i trying to go with this um i just think that we don't spend any time off the yeah. court off the court working on the mental part of our game and if someone says well that's just i mean the mental part you know, it's like a light switch, right? I mean, it's like I would right. talk about, well, my four-part between points routine. Well, I can't just go out there in a match and just flip the switch, and now all of a sudden I'm into my four-part routine. Right. I actually have to practice that thing, which sounds yes. goofy. I have to practice it not only on the court when I'm playing practice sets, but I have to practice it off the court as well. I've got to sit and visualize and see myself playing points and then just go through that thing. So anyway, what do you think, JJ? How are we going to help the folks really, first of all, understand that if you don't practice the mental part, maybe you're not in the hunt for the gold ball. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, at some point to reach that level, you've you've crossed over a threshold of being able to handle pressure um, through the course of a whole draw, um, because each match holds its own unique pressure of, of whatever it is that that day brings, right? It's either I'm playing an unknown and he turns out to be really good first round, <laughs> yeah, or I'm playing or I'm playing a known and I should beat this guy 99 times out of 100, but today he's playing out of his head and he's trying some new antics of you know whatever, and so that's being compounded. So I got to get back to you know, the basics and what, you know, what I'm going to do to take care of this match. Right. So every, every match along the way, um, you know, am I, am I now one round further than I've ever been? Well, all these things are, are initially are uncharted waters, you know? So, so there is no like, Oh, I'll figure it out now. You, you have to have some sort you, I mean, you do it in that moment because you don't know any better. It, you know, kind of when you're when you're starting out in this deal, and then and then you realize that things things keep cropping up. I can't seem to get past the third round. I can't seem to play this type of player. I can't seem to. Now you start to build your own database of what you can't seem to be able to do, <laughs> right? So so yeah, and then you know people read the books. They read the this, the Jim Lore, the um, Alan Fox, uh, the, yeah, Alan Fox, you know, the, Tim Galway, you know, yeah. all we, they read and they go, oh gosh, that's just so brilliant, and they expect it to just like magically manifest when they go to the court. Yeah, and and these are skills that mentally you have to sit, like you said, sit and meditate on them, and and then go out to the court and what's what is your ritual going to be? You have the four step ritual. I'm a little bit looser than that, you know, but I do have my process that when things start to, as the match starts to get focused, you know, and now things are getting down to, you know, and I have my own, you know, kind of, you know, routine that I go through as well. But um, it's, it's a, 
it's a practiced routine. Right. So yeah. you have to sit, like you said, sit and visualize, sit and and say your four part routine. So it just becomes this memorized, you know, uh, mantra, if you will, you know. And so I mean, I used to sit um, and play sets. I'd sit on my bed comfortably and play a whole set in my mind. Every set I ever played in my mind, I won six zero. But I played every type of point possible in my head. Um, and I always saw myself just moving smoothly, cleanly, never a question about where I was going to hit the ball, always confident hitting the ball. So seeing myself in that state, always reacting calmly and just and doing that. So for me, that helped me a lot along my journey to help uh, – to help just see myself always performing, not not highlight real stuff, but but always performing at the highest, uh, most positive, uh, most beneficial yeah. level to my to myself, conducting myself in a manner as well in my mind, as you know, with integrity and sportsmanship, and I mean, the layers of it just get you know go deep. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, well, I, I do think too that there's there's it's one thing to accept intellectually. Yes, the mental part of the game is probably kind of important for me to be able to play at the highest level I can uh, day in and day out. But there's another there's another component to you know once 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 you accept that intellectually, then how do you start to learn? how to actually do it. And it's, I mean, to me, it's a skill. It's like any other skill right. that we have in tennis or in life is that you have to, you have to kind of screw up. You have to make mistakes along the way. And, 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 and too often, I mean, I, I was locked into for a long time, this thing that if, if something, if I missed a shot or if the guy got, guy hit a good ball or if he got lucky, that I really, my, my first emotional response was something negative. Right. And, and that didn't really help me learn. Number one, didn't help me learn about what just happened. Is there something that I can glean from the point that I just played that, wait a minute, like in the talent code, well, actually what I meant to do instead, as opposed to, God, you're, God, can, are you going to ever, you're such a, I mean, he's so, God, you're right. And and you're just drawing all this negative attention down on you on the court. And and so to me it's it kind of gets down to the process is okay, I have got to embrace the mental part of the game. I've got to actually study it. I've got to learn it. Um, I've got to experiment with it. I've got to do some off court work with it. And then I've got to find a way. I've got mine, you've got yours. But right. I, I've got my own way now of being able to go, or, or I should say, how I respond to what just happened. And right. and I no longer respond in a super negative way. Uh, I no longer res respond in a super positive way, which is, right. yeah, baby, come on. Which is, it could be, wait a minute, I just won that point. I played a shot that, uh, you know, rather than having an emotional response, I want to go... Let's keep doing more of that because he doesn't right. like that. He does not like right. that, and and so it's it's yeah. I mean, I, I think you know, like the the three books we just mentioned are the three guys. You know, Tim Galway, Alan Fox, and Jim Lore. Any one of their books, you pick up any one of their books, they have a system, they have a methodology in in their teaching as they are explaining the the human mind of what you can do to do it, practice steps, things to do, any one of those books, right? And there's other sports psychologists out there that are doing fabulous work. Um, so, I mean, the list is endless, and it's just a matter of finding somebody that resonates with you. And it doesn't matter whether the sport is sp specifically tennis. There's right. great crossover uh, guys, doctors, uh, psychologists that are doing fabulous work in other sports. And that, and that information is being crossed over from tennis to baseball, from baseball to foot. I mean, it's just – it's all being circulated. So – I think the biggest thing is that, you know, we've talked about this before a little bit, and that is, do you go from your your lesson court and then actually sometime between that lesson and the next lesson, do you actually go practice, not go play sets with the team, but do you actually go practice what you were working on in your lesson? 
And the answer to that most of the time is no. Right. Correct. And so right. this is no different. This is this is no different. You're sitting there reading your book. You've got the information right in front of you and you read it. And you close the book. I got it. But you don't go practice the, the techniques of how to get your mind actually in that state yeah. um, to be able to perform athletically at a very high level because of the steps you've taken mentally to be able to handle what's happening to you. Because really, I'd say not so much at the national level, but in league tennis, I mean, you've got 90, 95%, I think, of that group that never played high performance any sport, any sport. And so this is their first toe in the water yeah. for competitive, a competitive sport, and they're getting inundated with – with pressure that they never experienced before. Oh, I got to play with so and so. Oh, we got we got to get to the nationals. Oh, and so now they're in these situations out on the court, and you're watching these people just implode. Because why is she questioning my call? I didn't take. I'm not. Are you calling me a cheater? I mean, <laughs> the, the, I mean, it just goes nutty, right? right. And the yeah. guys, the same thing. The guys are out there, and it's like it's like watching city league softball. You know, and these guys are ready to go across the net at each other because everybody's got their chest pumped up and they're the warrior. And it's like, it's like, dude, it, it's take a, you know, take a pill, like step off and like, and they don't realize that they're, that, that they're, they have no training to handle the emotions that are erupting in them from a competitive activity at age 50. Yeah. Yeah. Or 40 because they, they've never played anything else. So they never trained it. And so it's really I think there could be, you know, in terms of, you know, team tennis and that kind of thing. I mean, they, they could spend way more time as a team collectively understanding um, how detrimental um, the competitive atmosphere can be unchecked. No question. No question about that. And I know for me personally, Jeff, that. Uh, I, I am so vigilant right now on making sure that, and look, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to be practicing as much as I am. I mean, look, I've got an opportunity where I can go out and literally every day of the week, unless it's raining cats and dogs. I mean, I've here whether I'm down in the desert or here up in Northern California over Berkeley, I can always find somewhere where I can go out and practice, right? So I can either tinker right. on technique, I can either tinker on, on shot patterns, but I always make sure that at least once a week, that I spend a good 30 minutes of a practice time working on how do I want to respond. And my practices are not so much drilling cross court, but it's, it's playing out points, right? And, yeah. and how do I want to react at the end of every point? What's the first thing I want to do when this point is over? And, and either you have to find, find a place or a reaction that, that actually if it's if it's your own ego, that's that that is actually productive. Lots of us, lots of us have egos that we can't find Shocking. that place. We can't find that place. Shocking. It's just such. It's like you know. It's just crazy. So, so then if you can't find your own place where it's really a productive reaction, uh, and I'm, again, I'm not saying it's the big come on that we see the pros do. I don't believe in right. that stuff. I think it set, sets expectations that for us are unrealistic. Maybe for them, that's more realistic. But I think for the rest of us, so I guess what I want to say is that if you can't find a way to do it yourself, then go out there and find somebody, maybe one of the top players in your age group, maybe someone at your club, maybe right. someone on the tour who doesn't constantly do the fist pump, come yeah. on, that reacts in the way that you wish you could do and just take on that person for that moment. Right. Be the imposter, right? Be just, it's an alter ego. Just, yeah, just the alter do ego, the, right, right. And then just start to settle in. And I think pretty quickly what you'll find if you practice it enough is that it feels comfortable and it right. doesn't feel like it's totally, you, you know, Dr. Yeah, Jekyll I mean, well, and Mr. The, you, you, have, you have to manufacture it at first. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to lay the ingredients out. This is what I'm going to do first, yeah. second, third, fourth, whatever, whatever the steps are that you're going to take, and you have to see it 
got to have it clear in your head. This is how I'm going to do it. This, this practice set, this is how I'm going to respond. I'm going to do X, Y, Z, you know? And so for me, like right now, like I got to play yesterday in Modesto at Del Rio with um, our good friend, Mark Weir, um, got to play a few sets yesterday before I came down here to Fresno and, um, and we, you know, we played a few weeks ago. And so for me, I'm like slowly incorporating in points over win or lose. I turn and walk away from it. I don't linger and go, really? When I, you know, when I hack one in the net, <laughs> really? I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we played, we, you know, now both these times though, it's been, you know, with, with tennis buddies on the court. So there is camaraderie and that right. there's talking back and forth, but at the same time within that framework, sure. um, Everybody's competitive. Yes. Everybody, everybody wants to focus and actually perform better than everybody else. That's I mean, right. that's the way that's the way the animals work, right? Yeah. So, um, so even in that, so, so I'm that's like a little thing that I'm doing right now, even though I'm not getting a chance to play a lot. Um, that'll be something that when I'm back in Michigan and I do get a chance to play, that'll be a continued thing, a practice technique, and then I'll, from that stage, when I start to feel like I'm doing that automatically now, and I'm moving my mind. That's history. Here's the information gleaned from that moment. And now let's plan the next point. And so I'm, I'm going to be working on that when I'm back in Michigan is that process of, of really being clear, you know, the, the, like, what's my plan on the next point? Why am I, I've chosen to serve there. Why am I choosing to do that? Is that, or is that just an autopilot thing that I'm doing and now I just do it and, and I can't actually come up with an answer why I'm choosing to serve there. Right? So um, you got to be clear. It doesn't matter what level of the game you're at. You got to be clear about when you step up to the line to return, to serve. What's the plan? Why am I doing this? You, you know, and and just step by step, you have to, you know, again, manufacture it at first until it becomes second nature to you to do it. But that's that's so that's what I'm I'm working on right now is that that moment. Rafa does it. Fed does it really well. Those two guys probably more than anybody else because Djokovic actually will stand there and. You know, Bounce if you the ball remember, 17 yeah. times. Oh, that's right. The well, video. The line was true, but when it points over, <laughs> yeah. he'll stand there and give you the little this, the little chin wag a little bit, you know, look, yeah. he, he gives looks and things that where, where it's really fed. You might see a quick little glance with the eyes, but then he's off. He's walking, physically walking to the other side of the court, you know, to the, whether it's deuce at or changing sides. Rafa, same thing. Boom, boom, boom. He might go, you know, occasionally Rafa can get up with the, you know, the vamos and all that, but. He is so organized that you never really see him do that and then not be able to perform the next point. Right. You know, but, right. but one of his main things so is too, we watch him. He when he misses, he, he spins around and he is out of there. He wants to distance himself so quickly from that moment, you know. So um, I think, yeah, the the it takes practice. That's the that, that's what we're getting yeah, at good, here. Is good. That, you know, well look, guys, uh, if you want some help with this, uh, we're happy to do it at no charge. What a yeah. concept. Just uh, We've got a 10-minute free coaching call you can get on. It's just the three of us. It's a free call. It's private. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that one thing in your game right now that, uh, that is kind of a, a stick in the spoke. S stick in the spoke. S <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but you've got to bring one thing to this call. There's no way that we can go through your, your entire your entire right. laundry list of things you work on. So bring that one thing to the call that you know that if you could get that resolved and, you know, I'm not saying that we can give you the magic bullet in 10 minutes, but we can certainly put you on the path towards solving that so that you eventually get the result that you want with your singles or doubles or mix or whatever it is. The way to get on that call, go over to goldballhunting.com. First name, email address, click the submit button and uh, you'll get couple of great things. Number one is you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler where you can cherry pick your, the date and time for the call. Uh, but the other thing is you're going to get a private video that uh, Jeff and I recorded a few months ago about how do you reduce your day in and day out skill level range where one day you're pretty darn good, but the next day maybe not so much. We need to show you how to bring the bottom of that skill level range up so you yep. start to build some confidence. So with that, Jeff... Um, what would we like to find folks to do out there? Well, it's a long list. <laughs> All right. All right. Like us. Yes. Share us. Please subscribe. 
Let us know what you think down below. And I'm going to part with one more nugget here today. Okay. And that is when you ask a tennis player, it doesn't matter what level, right? We're talking about you know, national senior players, league players, and, and you just throw the question out. How much of tennis do you think is physical and how much do you think is mental? No one ever says tennis is like, oh, it's the mental side is probably 10%. No, everybody says at least 50% or more is mental. And so all you have to do is ask yourself that question and say, how much time do I actually spend practicing something that I just said was 75% responsible for the outcome of the game? Right. Yeah. Well, zero, right? It, it, ought, zero. To be, it ought to be 75%. Right. Yeah. And so anyway, yeah. I just want to throw that out. That's a quick check. You just I don't care what your answer is, how much time are you spending on that percentage of what you just said was important in the game? Good question. Good question, Esther. <laughs> All right, guys. On that, get out there today. Help someone else have a great day. Jeff, we'll do this again tomorrow. I can't wait.